And uh, my name is Xue Cui, and I come from uh, Hong Kong, but actually I'm teaching at Southwest University. And my, today my topic uh, uh, is understanding a history of rural reconstruction movement in China. Uh, I would like to define myself as a part-time um, teacher, university teacher, and also part-time social activist, because uh, we, um, our uh, senior fellows uh, in rural reconstruction movement, uh, in 20th century, they also have done a lot of uh, uh, not only academic work but also the uh, social activist, uh, uh, social activist work. And today, um, I would like uh, to provide a kind of uh, uh, alternative reading of a century of Chinese history, because uh, in my opinion, uh, rural reconstruction movement is a trajectory of surging alternatives to capitalist or socialist modernization which undoubtedly leads to the uh, destruction of rural communities and of defending South peasantry and rural governance in favor of the well-being of the majority at the grassroots level. So I would say that uh, in my heart, uh, we have um, the well-being of the majority uh, at the grassroots level. That means we have uh, um, the future of uh, majority in our heart. So. Uh, why we uh, so involved in social movement? That because uh, we have uh, the other people, particularly the um, the rural people in our hearts. So uh, uh, for the uh, past uh, 150 years of in, uh, of Chinese history, we would say that uh, the main historical project is uh, modernization and industrialization, and then uh, there's uh, so-called the four. Uh, China launched the four rounds of industrialization at very high cost. No matter um, they uh, mobilize uh, state building projects by Kuomintang or uh, the Communist Party, because uh, why they uh, so uh, uh, initiate state building projects? Because they face a very uh, serious problem. Uh, uh, the, the fourth uh, round of industrialization um, uh, I would uh, define into uh, four periods. The first period uh, is uh, initiated by the Qing Dynasty from 1850s to 1895. And then the second period is uh, preceded by the Republican uh, government, that is uh, under the uh, Kuomintang region. And then the third ray is um, by Chinese Communist region from the, 15, uh, from the 1950s to 1970s. And the, uh, the fourth one, but also even nowadays, we still have this uh, uh, the, the way of uh, industrialization. But of course, uh, the Chinese government actually tried to uh, move from industrialization to financialization. But we found that uh, uh, during those, uh, uh, for the past um, 150 years, we actually, uh, we found that the, commu uh, the rural communities actually suffered a lot. And as a response to the problems caused by industrialization and modernization, in a developing country, rural reconstruction movements were developed as a political project, and also, of course, as a cultural project to define the peasant communities and our culture. And then uh, those efforts actually come from the grassroots level, and uh, at the same time, not only a platform, but maybe a parallel to or in tension with projects initiated by the state or by uh, political parties. So uh, um, as a response to industrialization and modernization, there are two main ways uh, of rural reconstruction movement. The first way uh, it happens in, uh, in at the early beginning of 20th centuries, and then the second movement, uh, um, we all involved in this uh, new rural reconstruction movement. And then I will go into details later. And why, uh, when we want to understand why uh, the first way of rural reconstruction movements, we should understand uh, uh, what's happened in the uh, mid 19th century, because at that time, China uh, devastated and plundered by imperialist aggression. So we had a lot of uh, foreign wars, and we all always were defeated. And even within the, the the country, we also have the civil wars. So at that time, um, how um, at, um, those uh, intellectuals to think, how can we rescue our country? And at the same time, how to solve the problem within the countryside? So at that time, uh, the, main, uh, the two main problems, um, uh, I would say that one, uh, how to, um, uh, to get away from the imperial invasion. 
And the second thing is how to uh, transform society. Because at that time, uh, 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 at the upper level or the uh, lowest level, they all had, uh, they all are uh, opinion added, adapted. Now, we will find uh, some uh, old photos, those uh, uh, so-called the elites and also the uh, high-level uh, officials. So they all are uh, uh, opinion, um, opinion uh, adaptive. So um, as, you know, as I mentioned before, uh, we also face the uh, imperial invasion, particularly uh, the so-called the Boxer uh, Rebellion. After that, uh, uh, there are so-called the uh, Eight Nations um, Military uh, Alliance. They invade China, and then we were defeated, and we have to pay the Boxer in uh, indemnity. And then the indemnity is very high. At that time, you see 450 million tails of the fine uh, silver. So it's, uh, it's really uh, a um, great damage to our society. You have to pay a lot of uh, money to those uh, foreign countries. So um, at, at, this, at that time, um, how do you uh, think of the solution for the, um, the, the future of the country? And there are many schools of uh, rural reconstructions. And then one, uh, one of the uh, movement leaders is called uh, Liang Shuming. Actually, he is a uh, um, uh, Confucians, Confucians, and also a uh, Buddhist. And he uh, makes a very uh, good critique of um, modernity. And he not only critique, criticized the um, uh, revolutionaries and also the nationalists. Um, I, um, uh, I, I make a quote from his uh, book. It's named uh, The Theory of Re Rural Reconstruction and then also The Future of Chinese Nation. He said, the foundation and the center of Chinese society is the village. All cultures mainly came from and are practiced in rural society. For example, the legal system, uh, secular customs, and commerce, among others. Over the past 100 years, imperialist invasion certainly destroyed the village directly and indirectly. Even the Chinese people ruined the village like those uh, revolutionaries who were involved in the Hundred Days Reform, or the nationalists who promote national self-starvation. Therefore, Chinese history over the past hundred years is also a history of uh, village uh, destruction. So uh, we say that uh, why we have rural reconstruction? Because we face the problem of village uh, destruction. And then at that time, uh, there are different schools of rural reconstruction movements. As I mentioned before, those are those uh, our senior fellows, I would say that. So why we have to learn history? Because we want to learn from their lessons. They are, it's, they are really our uh, historical legacy. And then, uh, of course, we uh, face different uh, kind of problem. Uh, um, but but uh, we share the same problem. The problem is uh, the village destruction. So how to rebuild or regenerate rural society? This is our um, mission. Um, uh, at that time, uh, this is kind of a national movement because uh, they organized free uh, national conference of rural reconstruction. Um, so this is an old picture uh, uh, it took in 1934. Those uh, intellectuals, not only the local intellectuals, but also those intellectuals have uh, oversee um, uh, academic training. So they think that uh, uh, rural society actually is the, uh, uh, the solution of the, uh, that of the uh, society. So uh, this is, uh, at that time, uh, the um, main uh, uh, rural reconstruction experiment actually happened uh, along the uh, coastal area. But be because of the uh, Jap Japanese invasion in, 19 uh, in 1937, they moved the inland, uh, inland province for example, in, in Chongqing. So uh, another school uh, is uh, led by uh, James Yan. And actually, he, um, he, is, uh, he, he was uh, influenced by free, um, of course, a free main thought. Uh, for, uh, once it confuses, 
And of course, uh, uh, and, and the second one is cooling. I mean, the, um, the, uh, I would say that the supporting um, people, because during the uh, World War I, he served the Chinese coolie, um, and he found that he wanted to do something to help uh, uh, develop the village levels. Um, so when he came back to China, he uh, initiated the uh, mass education movement. But of course, uh, he also is a kind, is, he is also a, a Christian. So um, he thinks that uh, he influenced by three C, that means uh, Confucius, Kuli, and Christ. And uh, his, uh, I, um, his main idea is based on the, uh, this Chinese character, Ping. It means, uh, according to James Yan, the horizontal uh, bar on top represents the mind, essential for the success of any effort. The dash on the left is uh, equality. The dash on the right is justice. And the cross in the center is compassion for the neglected poor. But of course, uh, the, uh, the cross also means the Jesus Christ, right? So uh, there's a double meaning, uh, in my opinion. So uh, Ping Min, that means the common people. And he wants to uh, uh, initiate the mass movement for all people. And um, so he starts from the education project. So he mainly uh, devotes in uh, illiteracy campaign. And uh, he um, also had uh, 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 written the uh, credo of rural reconstruction. And then he also uh, um, think that uh, it's uh, very important to uh, let uh, intellectuals uh, integrate with uh, general people. So he, he, um, he said, uh, we should go to the people, live among them, learn from them, plan with them, work with them, start with what they know, build on what they have, teach by showing, learn by doing, not a showcase, but a pattern, not alls and ends, but a system, not piecemeal, but an integrated approach, not to conform, but to transform, not relief, but release. So the, uh, he has his first uh, uh, experiment in Dingxian in North China. But at that time, actually, the, those uh, village uh, elites had already started the uh, experiment uh, project, tried to uh, rebuild the rural society. But she, he think that uh, is uh, because the, uh, they all actually, uh, the initial always came from the uh, grassroots level and how intellectual uh, uh, get involved and also um, cooperate with the, um, the uh, village elites and also the grassroots people is very important. So um, he started many um, uh, projects and cooperative projects with the uh, village elites and the common people. So he, um, he coordinate uh, innovation ranging from hybrid peaks and economic cooperatives to rich drama and village uh, health centers. So you see, um, they produce a lot of uh, uh, literacy primary, which um, used uh, 1,000 1, Chinese basic uh, characters. So uh, in, in, in the picture, uh, it mentioned that uh, how the uh, illiterate uh, <coughs> people suffer from illiteracy, because maybe they, they, they are cheated by the land law. So um, they think that uh, if, uh, if you educate the uh, illiterate or village people, those they will help how to they con can control their uh, life. So uh, they also make a lot of popular song. And then this song actually uh, is very uh, um, peasant centered because they talked about the peasant suffering, peasant hope, peasant and also um, they are, um, how do they look in the future. And then in this song, the song of peasants, uh, he, he mentioned the last uh, three um, sentence, you see, intellectuals, workers, Merchants and, and soldiers look down on peasants. They look down on us, that means peasants. But without us, peasants, who can survive on earth? So it's really very um, peasant centered, the uh, plan, because uh, peasants is still the majority of our society. And of course, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, in 1937, um, we have uh, the Japan invade us, so they all the all uh, rural uh, reconstruction leaders moved to Chongqing, Beibei, exactly. This is my uh, university place. And uh, also, um, uh, James Yan um, left uh, China to Taiwan, and also he built another uh, uh, center in, in the Philippines, and also he initiated different projects in Latin America and, and Africa. 
So uh, uh, in this photo, he made a speech in the um, Philippines. The topic is advanced training in rural reconstruction. And another uh, very important school uh, led by uh, Lang Xiaoming, as I mentioned before. Yeah, um, he, he's not only a Confucian and also Buddhist, but also he also a political and social activist. So he also tried to um, make conciliation project between Guo Bingdang and Gong Changdang. And, all, and then in, in, during the uh, war time, then he, he also to form the uh, Democratic League. Uh, they tried to, uh, that means uh, uh, armed uh, force actually is not the ultimate uh, solution for our society. And then he tried to uh, uh, make a reconciliation effort between these two um, uh, rival, um, rival parties. So uh, his idea is that uh, um, the village school should be a learning unit that comprises local elites common villagers and, also, and outsiders, including intellectuals and professionals. The aim is to activate the communal capacity of problem solving at the grassroots level. So and, uh, he emphasized that uh, the, Im the importance of uh, nurturing new efforts from the ancient Chinese tradition, because uh, in face of imperialist invasion and also Western uh, way, uh, many intellectuals think that uh, democracy and science are the, um, the solution for our uh, country. But uh, he criticized this kind of uh, Western ideology. And also he tried to uh, uh, in reinterpret the Chinese tradition. And they think that uh, if we want to uh, get away from the aggressive bourgeois culture and beliefs, and then we should learn from our ancient Chinese tradition, the new ethics that he means. And then what does uh, the uh, new ethic means? He criticized that the powerful development of Western culture was based on conquer of nature and taking advantage of uh, nature. And that capitalism is to be uh, individualized and self-centered. So we try to, uh, to uh, how we say, to rescue our traditional ethics and also to um, to uh, uh, pay a lot of attention to how to uh, uh, reactivate the, uh, co uh, the uh, collective uh, value system that is actually is embedded in our ancient and co Chinese culture. So he, make, uh, uh, he used a metaphor to describe uh, rural reconstruction. His, um, the metaphor is um, new buds on the old tree. Old tree means the, our ancient uh, tradition uh, system and new bus that means uh, you have to regenerate or uh, the uh, new idea how to regenerate the new uh, or the regenerate the old uh, system. So uh, uh, in 1977 he wrote a paper to reflect on his experience of rural reconstruction. He said um, he think that actually rural reconstruction fundamentally is a question of ethics. Uh, he said, to be positive towards life and to remember the importance of ethics and friendships. So he think that uh, if you want to uh, get away or to uh, criticize the capitalist value system, that means we have very strong uh, cultural system uh, um, based on the um, ethics, based on the uh, solidarity and friendship among people. And another school is uh, led by uh, Lu Zhuofu. Actually, the um, idea is uh, uh, how to have an uh, enterprise for rescuing the country. So he set, he has, he set up a shipping company limited in 1925. So he has a very um, powerful shipping company. So um, actually, he is the uh, pioneer of social entrepreneurship. So uh, on the one hand, he um, make a lot of money because he had a lot of uh, enterprise. But on the other hand, he turned the capital into social. That means he invests a lot in uh, social enterprise and social activities. For example, this is the um, pic uh, about the uh, baby in the 1940s. And he um, tried to um, raise money and also build the first well world. Yeah, he has a mine company, a dyeing factory, 
Um, and also, on the other hand, he also uh, built up the uh, West China uh, of Academy of Science. Yeah, public library, and also initiate lots of uh, mass education program. And these are all social enterprises? Yeah, yeah, they're supported by uh, social enterprise. Yeah. So uh, he also organized the first person sports competition in Beibei in 1929. Yeah, hospital, school, and as I mentioned, uh, because and during that time uh, in Beibei, uh, different school of uh, rural reconstruction leaders, they all um, gather in Beibei. So they still continue the second wave, uh, I would say that um, the second uh, period of rural reconstruction. And then at that time, uh, Liang Xiumin uh, finished his book. It's called uh, The Fundamentals of Chinese Culture. And then other uh, famous school uh, is led by um, Tao Xingzhi, and he also focused on the education. And he, uh, his idea is um, how to integrate uh, neighbor with the education. Yeah, it's, it's uh, in separate um, uh, program. And of course, James Yans, James Yans and also uh, set up uh, the Institute of Rural Reconstruction of China. They lot and they uh, organize lots of uh, class. Now, uh, in the middle uh, is James Yan, and then uh, so our institute, or those uh, is the youngest institute in our university. But uh, we have very rich uh, historical legacy. So in two thousand and twelve, we rebuilt again the Institute of Rural Reconstruction of China. So before we are uh, talking about the, uh, the, the movement that we are all involved, and then I will give you a general picture why we are uh, involved in this movement. Because we found that uh, China, after the, uh, for the uh, past um, uh, 60 years, um, we, we think that uh, uh, peasant suffer a lot because the, uh, we have we say that the continue um, nation state building project and also industrialization, modernization. And then um, the, this uh, driven force uh, actually extracts the um, peasants, labor, and also they all move to the, um, the urban area. So we find that the, actually the rural society, are, um, uh, how would I say, they, they lose their energy. So uh, even, even though the Chinese government think that it's a really a real problem, so they uh, have so-called the uh, uh, rebuilding, has an official policy of rebuilding a new socialist countryside. And also in 2007, they are so-called the uh, ecological uh, civilization. So at the uh, upper level, actually the, Chinese, uh, the uh, central government think that we also to change the uh, direction. But on the other hand, we actually already suffer from the uh, past projects. So at that time, actually, I would say that we are at the uh, crossroad. How to uh, redirect the, uh, our the, uh, direction and towards a sustainable uh, future. And then at that moment, we think that we have to learn from our senior fellows until we start our new um, rural regeneration movement. So uh, um, we will say that uh, nowadays uh, we are influenced by um, our, say, well, our slogan, we will emphasize three uh, S, sovereignty, solidarity, and safety. So uh, we propose the consensus of the uh, three S for sustainability based on ecological civilization of the self, namely uh, sovereignty, solidarity, and safety. The world can return to ecological civilization only through empowering people's sovereignty over the common, both nature and human, autonomous from the capitals as well as state regimes, forceful expropriation, and strengthening self-self solidarity. Thus, a sustain, sustainable human uh, safety be secured. So, uh, um, at the turn of the uh, 21st century, we uh, start the new uh, rural re uh, reconstruction movement. And then we find that uh, we try to uh, 
organize many uh, classes for uh, peasants and also for uh, university students. So um, uh, Xiao Hui, uh, he is cameraman band, but at that time he also the student of the uh, James Yen's uh, uh, Wudo Reconstruction Institute. And then we think that uh, actually the young people is our future. So we try our best to uh, let the um, student be the uh, new farmers or new intellectuals, new social activists of our um, future. And in the middle is Professor Wen, and then he's the, uh, one of the uh, uh, leaders of rural reconstruction movement. And the other leaders is Qin Chi. Yeah. <laughs> so. Is it self self solidarity? What does that mean? So, so that means, um, uh, uh, as, you, as you know that, uh, uh, in general speaking, they are so-called the, uh, the North and the South. Uh, but uh, and, uh, tra traditionally, uh, in the South, actually, we share the same um, historical, how I say that, uh, the linkages or uh, the suffering, because we always, in uh, historical speaking, we were uh, invaded by uh, Western countries. That is the, our common. And the experience. And also, uh, many uh, developing countries also try want to uh, copy Western model. So how we think, uh, on the one hand, we criticize colonialism, but on the other hand, we try to criticize this kind of Western uh, developmentalism or uh, mod modernities. So, uh, and then we found that uh, in, in, in the North, we also have um, uh, uh, progressive intellectual or movement. Uh, for example, uh, like Schumacher College, they try to invest, the, uh, try to uh, initiate the uh, um, the move, uh, critical, I mean the crit critique of uh, modernism. So uh, we think that uh, um, this kind of the, the name, just kind of name, but we can uh, to um, uh, give more um, uh, a concrete thing. So we think that uh, we should have a new solidarity uh, between the, uh, uh, the progressive people in the north and also in the south. Because in the south, we have the conservative people. And then in the north, we have also the progressive people. So we have to link, make such a, uh, a linkage between the progressive people in the north and also in the south. So uh, south of that means uh, uh, of course, uh, we try to uh, critique the uh, um, colonialism, uh, capitalism, and um, mo modernism. But on the other hand, we try to look for a, a new uh, solidarity among people. So uh, we could say that it's kind of so, so uh, cooperative. So uh, in 2011, uh, we have organized the first social -so forum in Hong Kong. And then uh, the, next, uh, and the next year, we organized the second Salsa Forum in uh, Chongqing. So Julie and Robert also attend the, move, attend the forum, although they so-called uh, come from the north, uh, come from the developed countries. But we think that we share the uh, same uh, uh, vision and also uh, we try to uh, look for the uh, cooperative projects. So, um, so South South, that's uh, only a kind of naming how to, um, we try to uh, reface this kind of uh, uh, face, yeah, uh, reface this kind of um, word. Uh, so, uh, during that time, we also organized lots of uh, the social uh, meeting uh, in the village. And also, uh, we, uh, to how I say to uh, uh, mobilize a lot of uh, university students to the countryside, but actually I would say that uh, we also have uh, uh, the uh, tradition of uh, um, uh, during the Mao period. I would say that there are three race of um, educated uh, youth uh, going to the countryside, uh, work with them, and live with the peasants, and so we have this kind of. Uh, um, I would say that's a, a valuable um, tradition within the communist uh, legacy. So, uh, so this is an, uh, also we try to uh, uh, we, um, regenerate because uh, fundamentally speaking, we think that uh, if we want to uh, solve the uh, problem, not only peasants, but also intellectuals and also the officials, this is kind of a social movement. 
Yeah, or we also uh, organize a many training class for peasants. And we think that uh, uh, as an intellectual, we help, uh, we help uh, peasants uh, reorganize again. Because once, uh, 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 if, uh, uh, because we have a lot of peasants, but we, if they are uh, scat scattered, so uh, if they can't uh, uh, solve the problem just uh, um, done by uh, one <coughs> peasant, only through uh, self-organization. Mm -hmm. And um, I would say that means they can solve the problem together. So uh, we tr try to help, yeah try to help them to, uh, but of course they are the main actors, I would say that. So we are all only the supporting actors. Yeah. And of course we also mobilize the young students to do farming. And of course uh, we also organize the Rural Reconstruction Forum and we at that time we uh, invite uh, Dr. Weiner, Vinod Weiner from India because he uh, was involved in uh, people science movement in Kerala and all India, but um, for, unfortunately he uh, passed away. Um, yeah. And uh, we also organized the uh, training um, class and also um, uh, discussion uh, for women. Uh, we would say that uh, actually women, middle aged women, because a uh, lot of young uh, women or young men all go to the city. And then uh, those uh, left behind are middle-aged women or old women and old uh, men, the elderly and also the children. But we think that they can, can, they can be the, uh, uh, the actor of the new rural reconstruction movement because in the market they are, they are uh, worthless because uh, they don't have so-called the labor, um, labor power. But we think that uh, on, from the another, uh, from another angle, they will be the uh, future of our society because they still live in the society, they know what's the problem, and then they know how to organize themselves. So we think that actually they will be the pillar of the movement. And we also have the uh, 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 echo uh, architecture. The, those uh, buildings actually um, um, uh, made of the local materials. It's named the, the uh, Earth, right? The Earth House, number one. Yeah. And we also set up the uh, village library and organized the uh, dance, the folk dance. And uh, maybe you are interested in this uh, free one to Meridian training method. It's um, actually is um, invented by an old um, uh, Chinese um, doctors and uh, he think that uh, uh, he combined uh, the Chinese, um, I would say that the uh, uh, philosophical, uh, no, the philo um, um, uh, philosophy and also Chinese medicine because uh, free means uh, free uh, acupressure points, uh, he, he nei guan and zhusani, that means free. So every day you uh, have to um, press the free points. And also uh, to, uh, to do this kind of uh, abdominal uh, breathing and do the uh, squatting. So uh, this is kind of uh, 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 the whole series of exercise. So if every day you practice because it's simple. So uh, every time, everywhere, you can practice by yourself. So even when you are listening to my lecture, you can practice now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, so, uh, but of course you have to uh, make the right point, yeah. And uh, we uh, have this kind of uh, ecological toilet. Yeah. Sorry? For a bit yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is a simple one. Yeah, you have to squat. Yeah, yeah, of course. And uh, you separate from uh, separate the urine and also feces. Yeah, and then to make the compost. Yeah, it's a very simple one. Yeah, and of course this is a developed one. Yeah, maybe we like this kind of, this kind, this kind. Yeah, yeah. 
And now uh, we have new experiment. Uh, it's called the uh, Little Donkey Farm, and Julie and also the uh, the um, our, uh, yeah Stephen and Ruth also visit our farm. So um, I think you are, you like that, right? <laughs> yeah, and this is John. <laughs> Why the, the farm is named the Little Donkey? Because uh, the, uh, in uh, James Yen Rural Reconstruction Institute, they have debate uh, uh, about the uh, animal, animal neighbor um, power. Is this, uh, um, how I say, uh, is this, um, uh, it, is it important to keep animal in the farm? Because they think that the machine is more powerful. But animal actually units, but they generally a huge debate uh, in the farm, and and at the end they think that we have to keep animal because they are our friends, and also once we don't have any electricity, actually we have to rely, then rely on them again. So uh, they are not only uh, friends but also uh, very loyal to uh, human beings. So. Uh, it's important to keep animal again, it's a, although it's a kind of a symbol in the farm. And why, um, and then there's only, a, of course, um, we also have a, a kind of joke because the name of the donkey is named uh, Professor Jiao Shou. <laughs> but in Chinese meaning, it means uh, the beast. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah, and we also have this uh, um, um, pig farm. Yeah, because uh, but those pigs are fed with the uh, new nutrition, the natural nutrition. Yeah, because we think that we want to train the uh, young people to be uh, farmers, and also they know how to. Uh, they don't know how. Uh, they know the uh, organic farming at the at the uh, one, on the one hand. At the, uh, on the other hand, they know how to raise um, the animals, uh, like pigs, chickens. Yeah. So uh, we think that uh, uh, we would like to uh, regenerate the so-called the uh, small peasantry in our tradition, because uh, once we have a lot of uh, uh, young people to become a, uh, farmers again or peasant again, so that means uh, they, they know how to uh, connect themselves with the uh, land. They know, know how, they have know-how knowledge. And then they have the capacity of problem solving. So uh, we would like uh, those young people love land and love farming again. So we organize lots of uh, training uh, program and also social, uh, activists, uh, social uh, activities for young people and also for young uh, the family, family members. So uh, this is group photo. You can see uh, Julie, Stephen, Ruth, John, yeah, and Tony. Yeah. And as I mentioned, we all we organize lots of the uh, cultural activities. Yeah. And on the other hand, we have also another uh, a sister uh, organization. It's named the Liang Sumi Rural Reconstruction Center. And the uh, main uh, um, work of this center is to uh, provide the uh, internship for university students or uh, the young um, uh, rural workers. Uh, to spend one year in the village uh, to work with the uh, grassroots organization. Yeah. And uh, currently, we um, initiate the uh, campaign, it's called the Loving Home Village. So um, we uh, mobilize uh, people to uh, write poems, uh, articles, or do filming about their village, how they uh, love uh, their village in their own ways and also uh, to, um, uh, it's not kind of nostalgia, but how to, uh, uh, on the one hand, uh, nostalgia actually can't solve any problem because it's all kind of feeling, but how to uh, make this uh, uh, nostalgia feeling into a practical or uh, actual action. That means you can solve the uh, current problem. So we uh, hope that uh, 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 people will uh, think about their uh, village again and also love their home village again. And we also organize uh, the international extreme program with uh, 
people from Latin America. For example, uh, the lady in the middle is called uh, Eliana from Puno community in Peru. So um, she uh, uh, gave gift to the local peasant uh, organization. It's named the Yongji Peasant Organization. Actually, uh, Yongji Peasant Organization is led by women leaders. So uh, the thing that uh, uh, women actually can be the uh, important actor of our future. So um, if she starts a uh, dancing or cultural activities among village, among uh, the um, women first, and then uh, years by years, they uh, let the, the um, people uh, join together and to think about how to solve their problem. So now their organization is the, uh, I would say that is the best model of rural reconstruction because it's kind of a self-organized uh, um, work and also uh, women is a leader and then they generate different kinds of uh, projects, ecological farming, they, uh, ask, um, they uh, mobilize the uh, student, get involved the um, village work and also they have the uh, mic have the uh, uh, financial projects among themselves and also they have the uh, uh, rural uh, urban cooperative uh, uh, projects among themselves. Yeah. So um, they also have this, uh, 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 we try to revival the uh, old practice of, um, they use the uh, spinning wheel. Yeah, and uh, of course uh, we also the help the uh, have uh, the uh, um, rural migrants organization, and also uh, in this old man actually he um, collect a lot of the uh, ancient agriculture uh, instruments, and then this one is stone uh, grinder, so uh, it still works. Yeah. So once we don't have any electricity again, so we can use the old um, stone grinder. So uh, um, my concluding remarks will be uh, we uh, call on people of all race and genders to unite in solidarity no matter from the south or the north as long as they identify themselves with the principle of the free S together we can build another better world alternative to militarized financial globalization a diversified, inclusive, and ecologically sustainable civilization in which people and nature coexist harmoniously, thereby creating junior inclusive safety for all. So this is our hope. It should be exist in village. And um, yeah, as Julie mentioned, um, uh, why we are here because the extreme program between the east and the west and then of course we both have the uh, very rich historical legacy because um, the uh, um, Tagore in um, has an experiment i think we're all familiar with that um, uh, history he set up the uh, international university in his hometown and also he invites the uh, the amnesty uh, mr amnesty to set up uh, the name, yeah, the Institute of Rural Reconstruction uh, under that uh, international university. And in 1924, there's, uh, there was cultural mission to China. And then at that time, Tagore and uh, Mr. Amis also visit China. So these are old photos, but I think we continue this kind of exchange between the East and the West. And then because we all share the historical roots. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>